Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, we've got the... Um, we're revisiting the Corvin caps. So uh, you may have remembered I was supposed to do... About a month into this, I was supposed to do it. So that should have been, I believe, on the 22nd uh, of September. I actually recorded this, or that week there around. There around. There around. Um, and... Uh, I posted this on the 25th, and it is now November 3rd. Actually, technically November 4th since it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I should have um, done another one of these sometime before I went to um, Burgundy, which was the 15th. If I remember right, actually, uh, if I, I did it like in the 13th or 14th, we was going to be right about a month that I actually did it. So um, we're gonna say it's been a good six weeks now, and uh, we're gonna try the first test of it. Um, and this is actually, I'm already back from Burgundy, but this show is recorded after Burgundy, but I'm gonna show it before Burgundy just to get this out of the way. So a um, uh, couple things, uh, we'll, we'll do the wine first, then I'll, I'll talk about uh, some, uh, not Burgundy necessarily, but just kind of, yeah, so just stuff about Burgundy and the trip, but not the actual trip, like just stuff kind of related to it. Like, anyway, we'll get to it here. So uh, if you remember from the uh, episode on the 25th that I released on the 25th, um, this cap is meant to uh, be able to use with screw caps. And uh, they say that the wine is good for up to three months. Um, so we're at six weeks now. And let's go ahead and check it out going to uh, pop this bad boy on here, put the thing in there, and we're gonna pour a little bit into the glass. Uh, just really to talk about Burgundy while I'm pouring this, uh, Burgundy was amazing, and I think I'm out of gas. Man, why does it always happen to me when I use this thing? This is not good if I ran out of gas while I was pumping that, so. Let me go get another canister. I'll be right back. Um, I guess I need to go this way. So Burgundy, a uh, spectacular trip. It was phenomenal, spectacular, outstanding. Everything that you could want and more. And uh, you've got some great interviews coming up. I mean, I just replaced this thing too. That's what's really kind of making me mad. I'm I just put a new thing in, I swear, right after I got back from Burgundy. Anyway, um, so the trip was great, and uh, if you ever have a chance to go to Burgundy, if you've never been, you need to go. And uh, just the scenery and the people and the food and the wine and everything else about it, whoops, is pretty phenomenal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this out because I really want to get some good gas back into here. Um, I hope I didn't just mess up the wine as far as farther down the road. I hope I didn't put too much oxygen in there. So I just want to get some more argon gas in here. All right, there we go. All right, so we did that one. So that's, put this over here. So that is the um, one with the argon gas, you know, with the cap. And this one, freshly opened bottle. So these two should taste, maybe not exactly the same, but pretty darn close, right? Should taste really very, 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 very close. All right, now that I'm all situated. I'm, and I'm also using the phone 
as my camera. This is what I did for Burgundy. I think it did a pretty good job. I haven't done really any editing with the stuff, but what, what I've seen of it looks pretty good. Um, I don't have the same exact control using just the regular camera uh, as far as white balance and exposure. I'm kind of like, kind of like guess on the exposure a little bit. Um, I tried to use um, the Filmic Pro app for this episode, and I know I used it for some of the other ones, and I just can't for the life of me get it to work the way it should, like get the exposure thing to come up and for the white balance and all that. I, I, I just don't know. And the iPad, it has a remote on it that's supposed to be able to let me control everything, and it didn't seem like it worked at all. So I didn't use it for the Burgundy trip because I knew that this would be good enough. I didn't want to like futz with it and, and have the Filmic Pro thing just completely just crap out. Um, anyway, so let's, let's get into the wine. So Corvin cap. So on the nose, smells really good. I don't smell any type of faults. I don't smell any oxidation. I don't smell anything bad. It still smells really fresh. On the palate, tastes just fine. Tastes great. Um, still fresh, uh, very limey, very zesty, very chalky, very minerality. Let's uh, take test it on this one here. Pretty much smells the same. Honestly, this has a little bit more aroma to it. If there's a difference, it's pretty it's pretty minor. Hey, can you do the double swirl? This this actually has more aroma to it, so it's a little more opened up. Kind of worried that maybe there's like actual oxygen getting in there. But I mean if it was that much from the first time, then the, the wine would be oxidizing bad. So anyway. Maybe the act of doing all that just kind of aerated the wine. Kind of like a Venturi. So I can tell you it's virtually identical. Like if, if I put this in front of somebody blind I think they would have a hard time telling me which one I just opened up and which one which one was used the Corvin cap. So for at least six weeks in a refrigerator uh, for all that time, it works. It works perfectly as far as that's concerned. All right, so um, this will be the review of the Corvin cap because we're gonna do some other stuff. So I actually wanna talk about some things real quick. Um, besides that the Burgundy trip was awesome and like you should go. Um, a few things from the, tr from the trip, from the travel. Um, that uh, I, I thought about putting in a written post, but I'll try to summarize real quick. Uh, number one, Lufthansa, great airline. Uh, now, to get to Lufthansa airline, I had to take United. I know United had been a bunch of stuff a few months ago. I personally didn't really have any issues uh, going there. Uh, coming back, I can tell you that Denver Airport sucks. Just, I'm sorry if you live in Denver and you love the airport and have nothing talking about. I'm not even talking about the. The conspiracy theory murals, which actually I never saw. So I must have not been in the right spot. But unless I'm wrong, every single person has to go through the same eight or nine security things to get to the three terminals. Um, super inefficient. United has this thing called Clear, which lets you skip to the front of the line, but you still have to go through the regular stuff. I actually signed up for TSA PreCheck. I don't know why I'm holding that like that. And um, while on my way, to France, when I checked into San Antonio, I had to pre-check, and that was great. When I kept, when I got back, I didn't have it on my boarding pass. Probably, and this is you know my uh, inexperience. Probably because my boarding passes were printed in German, well, actually in France. So if I had uh, done the recheck in that I, I saw the there were recheck in uh, kiosk or or whatever counter, I have a feeling that I would have gotten the pre-check on my ticket. So that I could have done pre-check and it would have been great. Um, the plane was 30 minutes late getting into Denver. I had a total of two and a half hours originally. 
compressed to two hours. Um, the only bad experience was getting through the line. And let me tell you, TSA, don't be training when you have, you know, I don't know, 2,000 people trying to come through and you only have half your lanes open because guess what? The training line took two times to three times as long for us to get through as the other lines did. Oh, I was so irritated. Um, that was the only bad experience in the entire trip, really. Uh, I mean, customs in the United States and Germany and France were per were great. I didn't have any issues. Uh, border control, whatever you want to call it. You know, the passport people, though I do have to say, um, you know, the United States passport people, I mean, at least to me, being an American citizen, are super nice compared to the Europeans. Uh, they're not rude. They're just like, you know, they're just not overly friendly. But it was kind of like, hey, welcome to, you know, Germany. Hi. hi. No, the, Mr. Stuff. I'm, oh, okay. Anyway. Um, again, they weren't rude. They just were, you know, matter of fact and, you know, doing their job. And, and same thing in France. But everybody else, super nice. The, uh, I mean, anyone I met at the actual airport or the airlines with uh, in, uh, for Germany and France, uh, transportation-wise, um, just in the country, everyone was super nice. All right. Um, uh, I bought this Trianium battery case for my iPhone 7 Plus. I bought it uh, earlier this year, I think March or April, in preparation for my trip to New York. Um, because I was going to be in the city uh, for a wine tasting event for two different days. And then I was going to go back in the city, spend the night, and go to a concert. So I bought this so I would have no problem with battery life. Because this has a 4600 milliamp, I think it's called milliamp, um, uh, what should I call it, uh, battery on it. And um, I'm pulling it up right now. And uh, 4200 and it touts being able to at least charge the phone, uh, I think, one full time. And let's see if it tells me on here real quick. Yeah, it says uh, double the lifespan of your iPhone 7 Plus battery life for some series, some series extra, I think they mean serious extra hours. Um, anyway. So when I first got it, it was beautiful. It, it actually doubled my life. I mean, it doubled the battery life and I barely used it, but I, when I did, it was awesome. I, I've used it before the Burgundy trip and I thought maybe I did something wrong. Like first of all, it took forever just for the lights to the, the light up when you plug the charge in. So it doesn't, this definitely does not retain charge between uses if you don't have everything plugged in. Um, and then on the, on this trip, I noticed that um, it just didn't seem to like really hold the charge. And just now, um, I had the scene, I've had the scene plugged in for, I don't know, three, four days. It was fully charged. All the four lights were going. I put it onto the phone because my phone only had like 50% battery from being used all day. And I pressed the button, little, the phone vibrated. Cool. And then, I don't know, a few minutes later, it's not charging and it was down to one. It's not even turning on. I don't know if you can see it. It's flashing one little thing. So this thing is a piece of you know what after a few months. So don't buy it. I will leave a poor review on it. I think if I, I think I left a positive review. I was going to change the review. It has four something stars. It's forty bucks. Don't buy it. All right. Um, plus, I, and I think there's a manufacturing defect. There's this little bubble that I don't remember having at the very when I first got it and. I'm, I'm, I have a feeling that the actual battery is bad or became bad. It is, but I highly doubt that the warranty will cover it. Plus, I'm getting the iPhone 10 on Monday, which is you know in two days. So this this case is useless for me anymore. You know, will useless for me. Uh, OptiWine. I haven't used it yet, but my good friend Fabian down here in San Antonio uh, has used it, and uh, I bought it in. I bought it in Burgundy. I went to um, Anthem. I think that's the name of it. It's like, it's a, it's a wine shop, but it's really just a huge bookstore. And it's, it's like the largest wine bookstore, I think, in the world. As far as like selection of wine books. Most of it in French, obviously. But I mean, just just wine books all over the place. Um, so the idea of this is, um, and I, I don't know all the super details, but we'll, I'll do a review on this eventually. Um, but each of these has a different like effect as far as... Um, uh, decanting, but it's a canting in the bottle. So you put this in the, you put the stopper in here 
and then you uh, you do the bottle a couple times and it aerates it. So it's like it's supposed to have the same effect of decanting. Um, I bought it for 55 euros, which whatever that conversion rate went into at the time. Uh, Fabian told me it was a really good deal. I'm, I, if I remember right, it's close to $100 retail, somewhere between 75 and $100 uh, US retail. So I got it for right about the same amount of money, uh, but I got it in France. Excuse me. Also at that uh, bookstore, I got the uh, Inaram, or I don't know. This is an aroma kit, and it has 60 aromas in it. Um, now this cost, it says 190 euros. I thought it was 290. Anyway, 190 euros. I'll have to look at the, uh, whatchamacallit, but yeah, 190 euros. So that's like, I don't know, let's say 250 bucks at the time because it was not quite 1.25. It was like, it's probably close to like 240. Um, so this is actually, I think, cheaper than most any other kits with 60 aromas in it. Um, it also comes with a USB drive. Uh, with a bunch of stuff on it, um, but it basically has the 60 most uh, common aromas in wine, and uh, in, in order to help me with my um, blind tasting, also with my group, I went ahead and bought it, and I'm really excited. Again, my my, my buddy Fabian told my he, he he had one of these, maybe not the exact set, but he's had one in the past, and he said it was awesome. Um, let's see, the iPad worked great as you know replacement for the laptop. The only thing that sucked, and I didn't bring the theme down because I didn't think I was going to do a bunch of little mini reviews, is I got this little um, kind of a uh, almost a three-in-one adapter for like iOS or Android or like your computer, and you can stick your uh, SD cards in it. And I was putting my pictures onto the iPad so that I could upload them eventually uh, to the cloud and to Facebook and Flickr, which I've already done, um, and also to get the audio off of here. Because uh, this 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 uh, the Zoom when I bought it came with a two gigabyte card, and after a couple of interviews, it starts. I mean, I'm not out of space, but you know, I don't know if I could have done seven interviews, uh, or I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing seven interviews. So I ended up buying a 32 gigabyte mini SD card while I was in France. So plenty of room on that, and I think that's actually the card used I'm using in here. Um, and I had a 64 gigabyte SD card for my camera which again, plenty because every day, I think the most I took in one day was 300 pictures and I still had a ton of room on the, on the card. But really it was just like so I could put on the iPad and I had it uh, what I felt in a more permanent storage. But that little adapter sucked. Um, it took sometimes 20 times plugging in for it to be recognized by the iPad. Um, I should have just bought the Apple one. Well, it's actually, I think it's a Belkin. But that one, again, doesn't have great reviews on Apple, but at least it's like somewhat semi-official. So I'm probably gonna buy that. Um, the Bluetooth headphones I have that are super awesome, uh, Aventry uh, Audition or, or whatever. Um, I use them at the house um, when I want to have like, you know, wire wireless stuff, super comfortable. I use them for the airport, for the uh, New York trip. And I was really pleased with it, but I bought a special case for it. I mean, they don't come with one, but man, it just takes up too much room in the backpack. So next time and sometime next, I don't know, a few weeks, I'm going to go ahead and buy some AirPods because super compact. I think it's great. Um, the the uh, phone is connected to a um, USB battery, anchor USB battery and um, or anchor battery. And I think that's like a 6,000. It's like the absolute highest limit you can bring on a plane. And... Um, so that's actually hooked up to the, to the phone right now. So um, that's what I'm going to use from now. I'm not even worried about battery cases anymore because I didn't really need the battery case, at least all traveling. And the car has USB ports. I've got the battery, which I never even used. Um, and all I got to do is make sure I have like a long enough lightning cord or just, you know, if I'm some, some place doing stuff, have a chair. I mean, it's on a stool right now. Um, so as long as it's close enough to the to the thing. And the uh, tripod, the selfie tripod, which I talked about before, worked perfectly. Um, it's so compact, it fit in my backpack, and uh, it's great. And then I also bought this little thing to put all my cables and doodads in, and uh, worked great, fits in the backpack, keeps things organized. So as you can tell, I mean, I really thought about a lot of uh, the trip and try to make things as easy as possible. Um, it's really cool. And uh, I can tell you, 
I, while I had a, a, it wasn't truly a pimp ride. It was a Mercedes, but it seems like an entry level Mercedes, like a C class. They they didn't have the uh, model number on the back of the car anywhere, so it was hard to tell. Um, it was a really nice car. I mean, for it was a Mercedes. I like my car better. Um, I missed the car play, and the Mercedes didn't have car play. I really missed not having car play. Um, and I don't. I mean, I have a really nice car. I mean, not super pimp, but I got a really nice car. Um, and, uh, I kind of missed it, <laughs> but, uh, also n n for, for future reference, don't get, when they upgrade you to a car, don't upgrade to that car, get like a SUV, which is kind of what I have a, what, a CUV, um, but an SUV, get something like that because that Mercedes bottomed out a little too much driving literally through vineyards, probably not the best car to drive through vineyards in. Um, I think those are all the highlights. Uh, the hotel I stayed at, the Ibis Styles uh, Bone Center, uh, not the Ibis Center, um, but the, the Ibis Styles. Uh, great job with uh, everything there. I stayed there almost the entire time, right next, right, right in the middle of the town or near the center of town, where all the restaurants and the carousel near the museums. Beautiful, um, uh, super convenient. It has parking, so um, that was cool. And uh, that's going to be it. I'm, I think I talked long enough about the tur trip. Um, stay tuned for seven awesome interviews. They are we interspersed over the next, well, not seven weeks because I've got Thanksgiving, which I need to record here soon, uh, Christmas Eve or Christmas and New Year's Eve. So over the next two months, oh, whoops, sorry, a little over two months, uh, you're going to see um, interviews with the likes of... Uh, let's just go right in order. Uh, first is Trimbach in Alsace. That's next week. Um, and then the next uh, the next interview is um, uh, uh, Domaine Antonin uh, Guillon. And then after that is Fernand and Laurent Pio. And then after that, it's Bouchard Perefils. And then after that, it's William Fevre. Or is it Fevre? I heard both actually in France, but I was told initially it was Fevre. Um, and then, uh, then we ended in Beaujolais with two, uh, really awesome interviews. They're all awesome. Just so you know, um, the first one was, uh, Ponce and the last one was Moulin Enfant. And, um, yeah, uh, so that's everywhere I went for interviews and I got pictures galore on my Facebook page. Uh, so if you're not friends with me on Facebook, um, friend me up, friend me up. Um, I think my Flickr account's up there too. Um, basically there's the stuff I took with the phone isn't necessarily on Flickr or on Facebook in the albums, but they are strewn on Instagram. Um, the, uh, obviously the, all the stuff I took with my camera is not on Instagram because while it's not impossible to upload those things, um, because they're all on my phone right now, uh, it's just, it's just a lot. And we're talking 200, 300 pictures at once. Uh, you can go to my Flickr account and go to my, my Facebook account. Uh, to see those if you would like and that's cool i just want to go back i want to go back i want to go back to bordeaux i admit you know i went to bordeaux in 2011 i'd love to go back there again um now that i've gone to france twice i kind of got a little more better feel of it um this trip was i felt more confident in things i was doing um oh the i translate app i use on my phone i didn't use the there's like, there's another one by the same company that's like a con Converse or iConvert. You know what? It's on my iPad too. Um, where's my utilities? Bam, bam, bam. Utilities, uh, Converse. But I used iTranslate and it worked pretty, pretty well. Um, I needed a contact lens solution and uh, the lady didn't understand enough English for me to tell her what I wanted. So I typed it in in English, it translated to French, and she brought out exactly what I needed, which they're called rehydrate, not rewetting over there. Um, and I used it on uh, my last day in Bone at the restaurant. I told the waitress through the app that I had a great time. It was the first place I ate and the last place I was going to eat. And they did great. And I really thank, wanted to thank them for the hospitality. And then I asked if the chef was there and I showed him the chef. Showed it to the chef. He told me to sit back down. I had already paid. I was really getting ready to leave. And he goes, sit back down. And he brought over some Mar, Mar de Begonia. Not Mark, but hey, that's what I say. Mark de Begonia. 
and gave me a nice little pour of that on the house. And that was really cool. So, um, hey, it scored me a free drink. What do you know? All right, that's going to do it for this. Hopefully you, you listened or watched the rest of that. As always, friend me up. Uh, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the link over there to send me ducats. I did not want to, quote, beg for money in front of my interviewees, um, but Burgundy was expensive. Do you want to drop a couple dollars my way or a couple euros my way or whatever? Um, hit the PayPal donate button and um, click the link below. For information about the Corbin cap, um, if I remember, I'll put information about these other things, but um, really just the Corbin caps, what the, what the whole episode's about, but I wanted to kind of chit chat. I, I, I'd like to actually do a full written recap of, of the ship, of the trip, including, you know, the trials and tribulations, more, more just the, the, the few things that like just didn't work like that, that like it sucked. Um, and just, you know, uh, advice on traveling if you've never done it uh, or you're going by yourself, um, which is what I did, which I love doing. That's going to do it. I just want to thank everyone for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.